The wider Caribbean region embraces the countries and territories washed by the Caribbean Sea. But this body of water that links us all now faces serious threats from the land, threats that can dramatically change our lives. Pollution from the land that reaches the sea is a pervasive concern. We are all at risk. Village-based fisher folk and operators of multinational hotel chains, creatures from our streams, rivers, estuaries, mangroves, seagrass beds and coral reefs. Fisheries, tourist attractions and valuable food supplies are also at risk. Income generating opportunities are being lost forever. The Convention for the Protection and Development of the Marine Environment of the Wider Caribbean Region, better known as the Cartagena Convention of 1983, recognizes these threats. It also spells out actions to deal with them and includes three different protocols. The first protocol deals with oil spills. The second protocol is designed to conserve specially protected areas and wildlife. And most recently, the LBS protocol addresses the problem of land-based sources of marine pollution. The LBS protocol identifies the major sources of land-based pollution and offers ways to reduce their negative impacts on the coastal and marine environments. The LBS protocol offers us assistance to deal with problems of pollution, but so far only two countries of the region have formally signed or ratified it. If all countries of the wider Caribbean region formally ratify or accede and take the necessary actions to meet the obligations of the LBS protocol, the fate of our Caribbean Sea and our lives can change dramatically. This protocol brings hope for the sustainable development of the peoples of the wider Caribbean and the protection of the Caribbean Sea. There are two regional activity centers monitoring the protocol. These are the Institute of Marine Affairs in Trinidad and Tobago and the Center of Engineering and Environmental Management of Bays and Coasts, known as CMAB in Cuba. The garbage we dump inland eventually makes its way to the sea via storm drains or through heavy rainfall. Waste may also come from recreational and other activities along coastal areas. Sometimes we throw our garbage into the sea because we think the sea will swallow it up and it will magically disappear, but it doesn't. Today, pollution from the land that reaches the sea is endangering our lives. Fish stocks are being contaminated. Our nearshore reefs are dying. Mangroves are disappearing. And the quality of our recreational bathing waters is being affected by land-based sources of pollution. Such pollution has negative impacts on our health, our livelihoods, our jobs, whether in tourism or fishing, and on the natural ecosystems mangroves, seagrass beds, and coral reefs. Why care about mangroves? Mangroves are often seen as wastelands where mosquitoes breed. We clear and drain such areas to build coastal resorts, roads, or airstrips, or to use as garbage dumps. Mangroves are important because they form natural barriers against hurricanes and the strong winds associated with storms. Also, they are, they are the homes and nurseries of many species of fish and other animals. From the land, mangroves act as natural barriers against pollution reaching our seas and coastal areas. They also act as natural water filters purifying our water. They are very economically important to the Caribbean region for reasons such as ecotourism and as fisheries for commercial and sport species of fish. Mangroves also slow flooded rivers, preventing damage to coral reefs. In the quiet mangroves, Juvenile fish and crustaceans find a safe place to thrive. Other reptiles, mammals and fish make mangroves their permanent homes. Mangroves also absorb harmful substances such as sewage produced on land. Why care about seagrass beds? Seagrass beds are sometimes cleared to offer tourists white sand beaches, but these are important habitats, providing a home for tiny fish and other young creatures. Seagrass beds serve as nurseries and habitat for many commercially important species like snappers, um, crabs, uh, lobsters that we all like to eat, the tourists come here to enjoy. They also are important for non-commercial species, things like sea urchins, seahorses, uh, starfish, things that contribute to the functioning of the ecosystem. Green turtles, for instance, eat the blades of the seagrass and this helps to maintain the health of the seagrass bed. 
the roots of seagrass bind the sediment that um, may cause the, the water to become turbid or dirty. Um, they also are able to help filter out some of the nutrients and that flow over to the reef and may cause pollution to the reef surface. The health of this offshore nursery eventually determines the productivity of fish and other marine stocks. When pollution from land reaches seagrass beds, creatures may sicken and often die or pass on the poisons they ingest to other creatures, including us humans who eat them. Why care about coral reefs? Coral reefs are the calling cards of many Caribbean nations. Tourism operators, local fishermen and indigenous coastal communities depend on the health and pristine nature of coral reefs for their livelihood. Um, the coral reefs are similar to tropical rainforests in that you have a lot, a lot of species like lobsters and shrimp, fish, anemones and the corals that live there and form an ecosystem in their own right. Reefs are also natural barriers to protect the land from storm surges. Reefs may take thousands of years to grow, but they eventually die if the water becomes murky and polluted with harmful chemicals and suspended solids. When people degrade the hillsides and cause soil to be washed into the sea, this has the effect of um, smothering the corals, which means the loss of habitat to all the other inhabitants of the reef. So if the corals die, the eventual thing is if the reef dies also. Land runoff is the primary source of suspended solids, which can cause murky waters. 10 million tons of sediment per year reaches our Caribbean Sea due to soil erosion from hillsides, plowed fields, construction sites and quarries. Now just how does the LBS protocol help? Well, it alerts us to the serious problem of pollution from the land and it identifies the main pollutants affecting our Caribbean Sea. These include sewage and wastewater from showers, wash basins and laundries of households, businesses and hotels. In fact, 80 to 90 percent of wastewater is discharged into the sea without treatment. The LBS protocol identifies pollutants from chemical industries, extractive and mining industries, pulp and paper industries, manufacturing industries, sugar refining and distilleries, food processing and intensive farming. It describes the effects of land-based sources of pollution on human health and habitat health. It gives technical guidance for determining levels of marine pollutants. It provides scientific standards for safe discharges of effluent into the marine environment.